welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's making it a great week, folks. We're kicking off into the uh, autumn. It's still summer, but bottom line, from now until um, this is one of the longest streaks of basically um, volume, real trading, now until uh, Thanksgiving. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 44, NASDAQ is up 8, SPs are off 3.5, gold contract down 21 bucks, trading at 1,266 an ounce. Silver down 29 cents at $19.19 an .19 ounce, platinum off 14 at 1,409 an ounce. Copper flat at 315 a pound. Light sweet crude down three bucks. That's a beautiful thing. $92.98 a barrel. Bonds. You have the 10 near down 16 ticks, just about a half a point at 125.26. The 30 years off uh, one full point and 11 ticks at 140.06. King dollar up 227 ticks at 83.01. The euro is down two at 131. And the yen is trading up 78 at 105.13. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. I know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do we have out here? Okay, so check it out. Cash S&P. What have we done out here today? You got another high. The high on cash S&P out here is 2006. Right now, you're at uh, 2000. You take a look at the SPY, the SPY. The SPY out here is traded as high as 200.99. Right now, you're at 200.42. Um, you know, intraday you had a little downdraft, but bottom line is that uh, this is the first day back from the long holiday weekend. And what you do have, uh, the first day back after Labor Day, this is also a light volume day. So what we have here is another high on light volume. I don't expect it until, um, you know, well, cash S&P, what you have is this. The cash S&P got to 2006, but your benchmark, it has to get back under 1991.39. You get back underneath that, then you get action on the downside. Why? Because we have all those high volume lows that are basically sitting there wanting to be tested. Dow Industrials. We're going to take a look at the Dow Industrials. What we have with the Dow is this. Uh, what's going to get intriguing here is that the Dow couldn't make it to its high out here today. And the Dow had a little, little weakness uh, on the on the downdraft bottom line, I expect it's going to stay up here though. They'll basically push into a flat market coming into this close. The high that has been established in the Dow is the 17,151. That was on the 17th of July. We got to 17,124 uh, on the 25th. That was the test. Nasdaq Composite. Inside the Composite, we have Composite another high out here today. You're at 40. 589 right now. The high out here was uh, 4598 for the day. Uh, volume on all the indices are going to come in really weak once again. Uh, we take a look at the characteristic right now. So we get uh, 50 minutes coming into the close. Right now we're at 373 million on the NYSE. That's going to put it at about 550. We take a look at the NASDAQ. Right now the NASDAQ is running 1.4. That'll put that. Uh, that's pretty good actually. Uh, that will put that at about one point. That'll come in at about one point seven. We look at the three Qs, the NDX one hundred. Uh, NDX one hundred today has fourteen million shares, which is anemic, by the way, folks. It's taken out a swing point of twenty four million, which was anemic on the twenty fifth. Bottom line, the three Qs should be banging out about fifty to sixty million shares. So no one's in the store, and they're still buying the product. Gold contract. Let's go over to gold. Okay, so this is what you have with gold. Gold gets slammed out here, down 21 bucks, but guess what? You have 172,000 contracts. Now, that is heavy contracts. There's no two ways about it. We um, are coming into, you're coming into two separate areas, folks. And this is what the metals market just loves to do, which is a mind blower. You're coming into, on May 27th, we had a downdraft that went from 1295 to 1264. Monster volume. You're coming into that one there, and then you're coming into the updraft when we went from 1277 to 1322. The 1277 to 1322 had 225,000. I actually am um, not quite sure what we had 
on the 27th. I know it's lighter volume because if we go over to the GLD and we take a look at this, we can find this out. But right now, I'd, off the top of my head, I don't have it. But the GLD, when that had come down on the 27th of May, you come down with 10.9 million shares. Right now, it's 7.5. Then we had gone up with 24 million. So that correlation there, inside that correlation, it's a correct correlation in order to basically test the swing low with lighter volume. Now the key is going to be, do you gonna, are you going to get a rejection of lower price? If you happen to be in the gold or silver market, right, what you want to wrap your head around is this. It's the December lows. Well, it's actually the highs of the lows this past December, December of 2013, that I expect you're going to see a test at. That number is 120.77. That's really going to be hard to blow that volume characteristic away. It can get into it in price, but it's going to be really tough. Why? Because we did 63 million shares that week. I expect you're going to see it get into that area, reject that area, and certainly have lighter volume. The equities, if you go look at the XAU and the HUI, this is pretty impressive. The XAU and the HUI still haven't broken a lower swing point. XAU is down 351 out here today. We're at 9876. 9705 is the swing point. And after a price destruction like we had in the metal market today, that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, Gold Bugs Index, HUI. That's down 854 or 236. That swing point is 231. So bottom line is that the gold and silver equities are still much stronger than the actual physical metal. The oil market, check it out. Oil market getting toasted and roasted out here today. That's down 3% with volume. The, the oil market looks like it's a very large ABC structure on the way down. We're doing, we've done 296,000 contracts out here. Uh, the B point of the ABC structure on the way down is 92.50. I expect you're going to see that um, get taken out. If that gets taken out, we're going to have, uh, let's see, realistically, the most conservative way to do this would be 10 bucks, 80, $86 um, crude oil. That's, that's a small ABC structure. Gasoline, you're going to love this, folks. Gasoline, we're going to be at 225. Right now, wholesale is 254. This is also a large ABC structure on the way down, and this one is a vicious one. Uh, but that's going to be really great for all of us. It's going to be great for the economy also, because that's going to put some real juice in people's pockets each and every uh, day. Uh, the, the B point on this, we're at 254 down 7.5 cents. The B point is 251.86. You break, uh, see, the, the way that the gasoline contract is already set up, all you have to do is actually stay under 257, or 254, and 225 would be the next level. And 225 would just be amazing, because 225, we're going to bring you down at the pump about, uh, it's probably about... about 285, somewhere in that area. King Dollar. Let's go take a look at King Dollar. Now, what King Dollar has done is this. Longer term, King Dollar wants to run up to this 8550. It'll be a mind blow if it run, runs and doesn't stop at this point. You know, we'll see where that shakes out. Right now, you get an ABC structure that was finished. Um, it's extending itself, which, which it can. Uh, bottom line, uh, the volume is starting to die. The strength is there. You know, we'll see. Uh, if, in fact, it's going to rest before it makes that run to the 85.50 mark. If you put this on a continuous contract, you're going to see that uh, that 85.50 is uh, basically glaring out there. And how we get into that is going to be really crucial to understand, uh, is this the larger ABC structure on the way up? I suspect it is, by the way. But this is what we'll end up having. If, the, if King Dollar right now does not stop and goes right for it, it will not be an ABC. Why? Because the amount of strength and energy that's going to take to get up to that level, it'll die on the vine. That's just normally how they, these things work out. Um, the way that it would take it out is that right around here, you start going sideways, you pull back a bit, you build more cars to get more strength to get up and over that level. 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the markets, folks, we have the uh, Dow right now uh, is down 42. Nasdaq's up 10. S&P's are up 3.5. We're going to break right back.
Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Tom Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow Industrials right now down 44. Nasdaq's up 10. S&Ps are off 3.5. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman at the Chapman Wave. And don't forget, folks, every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time right here, you can get uh, Basil. He has an outstanding show. Call in. Talk to him. Coming this September 12th, a week from this Friday, folks, that Basil's going to be doing a Master Trader Series online. That's going to be an eight-hour Master Trader Series online. What you get with that, of course, is eight hours of Basil growling a problem with you teaching his method uh, along with the one month of his newsletter which is 128 dollar value you can check this out in the front page of tfnn.com basil chapman what's going on 
Hi, Tom. How are you? I hope you had a good weekend. I did. And yourself? Yes, very good. Thank you. Cool, man. Cool. So let's, can we just talk, I know we got a chat up, but talk a little bit about what you're going to be teaching at the Master Trader Series first, okay? Well, what I'll be teaching is the, the basics, the core, where you identify the lowest low bar and you merely start a count to the upside and how you label each successively higher peak with the uppercase letters, uppercase A, B, C, D. It can go higher to E, F, and even a G, but the core is to get you to the D. Okay. And then other things take place. So that that's the basics. Within that, I'll be talking about the type of candlesticks we're looking for, how we use these other indicators like the MACD, the moving average, convergence, divergence, long name, but a very simple tool and a beautiful tool. You can even see it right here on the Dow where once the uh, MACD cross positive, it's still positive and that can help you stay in a trade much longer than you normally expect and then the slow stochastic is something that I also do a lot of work on and I teach how you what levels you can use in the stochastic to keep you in the trade. In other words, if it's over 80%, it means something. If it means over 90%, it means something uh, even stronger. Okay. If it's under 20%. I'm also going to teach right here on this particular down chart, you'll see there's a, it says LS and RS. There's left side, right side. It's very interesting that unless uh, the price goes into crash mode, and that can be a one-minute chart or a one-month chart. Most of the time, the number of bars to the downside could equal the number of bars to the upside, even though one has in the when when the bear phase starts, then people get very are very quick to get out of stock. So that's what I call the the the, the kind of crash mode. But most of the time. You will find, just as we went from the 17th of July at 17,151, 15 bars down to the 16,333 uh, uh, August the 7th low, so we went within two bars to 17,153 of that left side to the right side price time match. In other words, it took 13 days to get to that particular high. So these price time matches are very important. I also will be teaching how I can use, I'm just going to grab a chart here, it's so okay. easy to see, mirror images. Yeah, for instance, I always ask people, and they're a little surprised at the question, I say, are you, are you better at shorting or going along? Some people have a very good eye for shorting, even a bull market. Other people are very good at holding positions on the long side. Right here, you'll see the DOG, which is the ProShares Trust Short Dow 30 at the top. And you'll see the mirror image of the Dow Diamonds, the DIA. So when you, when, when you are very conversant with looking at stocks in a particular way, to use the mirror image to kind of give you an inflection point to say, I am right in my thinking because this stock is going up as the other one, the reflection or the mirror is going down. These can help you stay in trades as well. I'm also going to be teaching uh, the different techniques that I use, the cup formation, the V-shape formation. In fact, most of the time you'll find that stocks travel either in a cup formation or an arch or a V-shape or an inverted V-shape or a straight line move. So if you can get those five patterns down, it's really actually just three. It's very important because it can really help you. Then I'm going to teach about the nine period exponential moving average. That's that maroon line. And even today, the Dow touched the line and bounced off. So these are all very important. They, what's, what I love about it is that they are complementary to whatever other technique you are using. You can add the different aspects of the Chapman wave because it should it should make your particular technique even more robust. And folks, you know, as you come over to TF and then you're going to see the uh, the master trader series going to go from nine o'clock in the morning to five in the afternoon. Uh, it's only seven hundred ninety five dollars, and inside of that, of course, you're going to get it's going to be on your page for a full thirty days, and you also is it, it's included is Basil's newsletter, which is another hundred twenty eight dollar value. So when we're, when we're looking, Basil, at at the Dow right now. Talk to me about what we're looking at here. So what we're looking at, another thing that I like to teach is speed is very important in both a bull move and in a bear move. And in a bull move, most of the time, you will see 
one to three bars of consolidation. The best is when you only get one and it takes you to C. That's exactly what we've had here. This okay. is the Dow. This is the daily Dow. This is a chart formation. 16,627 was peak A and it took just one day down on the 12th and then on the second day, whoosh, it made a new recovery high and that started leg B. So the other thing that I teach is that these are called legs until they make a peak. So I'll grab this little B and every every move up was leg B, leg B until it hit 17,074 and that was on the 21st of August. Pulls back for one day and then it climbs to 17,153, an all-time high at peak C. And now we've taken four sessions. Now, there's a rule of thumb that I use. It's one, three, five. After that, you can go all the way to a nine. So this consolidation has taken four days. Tomorrow needs to see an, a good bounce, a bounce that takes you to at least the uh, 17,130 so that we can get close to making the leg D, the missing leg D. And what's so fascinating about this, remember I spoke to you a little earlier that we had gone along Facebook in my newsletter yes. and that was based on many of the techniques. One of them is the cup formation and that within a sharp move, often it's a gap up. People always say, what do we do now that there's a gap up? Would you buy, would you sell? Well, I have a rule of thumb. And in this particular instance, what we've got is that peak D at 76.74 in Facebook, pull back very sharply at peak D. That's what we always look for, four higher peaks. It pulled back, and again, we went back to long at 72.90. We had two positions. We took a profit off one. We've still got the original one at 72.90. And today's trading at 76.37. Why? because that left side, right side, it failed, just barely failed to make the 76.74 D, but it held just on the nine-period moving average. The MACD seems to have turned around, the stochastic, so today is a very strong day. I suspect we're going to test that 76.74 high of the 24th of um, of. Uh, that was of July, but most importantly, what I was talking to you about when we spoke about Facebook is that the weekly chart had a beautiful, and, and I'm also going to teach how you can use just two simple trend lines. Sometimes it's one, but sometimes it's two. It's a pattern I call the inside track, and every time Facebook has gotten to this area between green and red, that's where it's been repelled to the downside. So I'm anticipating we're going to make a leg C above 76.74, and that's where we've got to get a little bit careful as to the position that we have. But that will start leg D in the weekly chart. And interestingly enough, you're getting close to the resistance in the week in the monthly chart because at 76.75 it makes leg E. So those are that's a very brief synopsis of how you can use the letters, and that's what I'll be teaching. And folks, you can check the right, it's right on the front page uh, at TFNN, right in that carousel. And of course, don't forget you can listen to Basil each and every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, right here. Get it right on your cell phone, TFNN.MOBI. Basil, have a great night, safe night. Look forward to uh, the show tomorrow. Thank you very much, Tom. Have a great evening. Come right back, folks. Stay right there. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the uh, Dow down 50, NASDAQ is up 10, S&Ps are off 3.5. Inside the commodity market out here, you had, uh, let's see, there she is. We had natural gas down 4% uh, um, today. Uh, crude oil is off 3.1. That continues down. Gasoline is off 2.9. You get heating oil off 2.2. And when you look at gold, gold is only down uh, 1.6 in the correlation uh, of how gas and crude and gasoline is going. What that's doing is that if you go over to the XLE, the oil and gas sector, you'll see that sector right now we're down 135 at 97.39 with an expansion of volume when, in fact, we don't have any volume out here today. I suspect that this is a large ABC structure on the way down. Your B point on this is 94.49. Uh, ExxonMobil, which is the largest weighting structure inside the XLE, uh, bottom line is going after that B point today. The B point is 97.63. We've hit 97.81. We uh, have done 6.1 million shares. Now, we'd have to break it on more than uh, 10 million shares. Uh, but what it's doing, it's going to the bottom of that range, stopping before it. And what that 
lends to is that it gets a good night's sleep, it wakes up in the morning, and it goes after that uh, B point. Uh, CVX, which is um, Chevron, uh, Chevron's down two bucks today, uh, which you have with Chevron. Same thing, expansion of volume on the way down. Right now, we are at uh, 127.36. 124.58 is the B point on Chevron. So we'll see how that uh, shakes out as it comes into lower price. If we go over to the Europe for a second, we look at the UK. The UK couldn't hold price out here today. Uh, at the beginning of the day out here, folks, what you had is that um, the FTSE 100 in the UK and the DAX, they both were at higher highs. In both cases, they couldn't hold higher highs. Um, the, the FTSE right now is at uh, 68.29. The DAX in Germany, what the DAX in Germany did is that that almost got to its last swing point, swing high, that is, at 9,600. We hit 95.78, then it gave it up. Uh, 95.07 is the number. And what I expect you're going to see there, a little more sideways movement, and then it's going to go after its last swing lows. Um, what, the, what the DAX in Germany did, it was amazing. It goes right up to ice, okay? That's the 9582 number. Um, you know, pretty amazing. It, it hung up there two days. One day, 9591. The next day, 9600. Then couldn't handle it. And we're talking about dramatically lighter volume. We're talking about... It went up there with uh, 66 million shares versus 131. Uh, then it comes off it again, you know, with light volume, by the way. Uh, I suspect what we'll see the next time down is that the, you'll see the volume expand. Why? Uh, the DAX in Germany has three separate lower lows now. And each one of those lower lows is lower than the February 5th benchmark that our own market is at. Um, what I do expect uh, the, the rest of this week uh, is you're going to get some volatility in this marketplace. The, the first sell down intraday today, you can see they're getting it on price, but guess what? This is a day that you got to a higher high with lighter volume. That's how this thing is shaking out. If we go take a look at some of the high volume stocks in a low volume market, uh, what you have is this out here. We got uh, apples up 72 cents. Oh, hey, Home Depot. So let's check this out. This is intraday. So intraday, Home Depot, right now it's down $1.94. What this is about is that, uh, and this is an equity, folks, that you're going to want to be all over on a pullback. Just let it, let it go for right now. You get a gap that's wide open at 84 bucks. It's going to get hit. And what this is all about is that what they're saying is that, um, Home Depot, the largest home improvement chain, fell as much as 3.4% in New York trading after saying it was working with banks and law enforcement to investigate a possible data breach. We're looking into some unusual activities. Uh, Paula Drake, a spokesman for the Atlanta-based company, said in an email statement, we are aggressively gathering facts at this point while working to protect customers. If we confirm that a breach has occurred, uh, we will make sure customers are notified immediately. The bottom line is that it looks like... Um, there may have been a very large breach, not a small breach. We're talking about something that's big. Um, yeah, but that's, that's the bottom line. So uh, the, the amazing part, there's no doubt uh, that when we talk security and when you're, when you're talking credit cards, uh, this is just happening more and more and more, which is pretty amazing. Uh, now, in that context, uh, an equity that has got absolutely killed because they haven't figured out how to make money on this yet, uh, is FireEye, F-E-Y-E. -E. Um, this is an equity that basically specializes in, in this type of security. Well, uh, you know, malware protection systems, network prevention, uh, but they haven't figured out how to make good money off it yet. Um, this is an equity that has gone down from uh, a, a high of $97, hit the first low of $25, bounced off it, um, Right now, it's up 246. I suspect because of what's happening um, with Home Depot. Now, it's going to be really wild watching this. Is that you, you do have an expansion of volume in this baby right here today? So we're at 33.55 and 36.65. Yeah, she she can go for the swing point. It's going to get interesting. She, can, you know, this is an equity that has got killed, um, but she can go for 40 bucks. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, if, in fact, uh, this is something that will, the, it's certainly intraday. As Home Depot was going south, this was going north. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, 
the, the exact same time frame, actually. Uh, this went from 3291 to 3379 with volume. So it's an intraday ABC structure on the way up. That's, that's how the, that is shaking out right now. Uh, let's go over to Lowe's just for a second. Uh, L-O-W and see what's happening. So it's not affecting Lowe's yet. Uh, so it's strictly just the, the data breach. But those data breaches, of course, are huge. Why um, the liability structures uh, for these large companies seem to be quite a bit. It really, I guess it would depend on how much insurance that they actually also have, um, you know, to cover that. If we go over to the financials, we take a look at the XLF. XLF is hanging at the highs up here. Uh, it's flat market today, 2341. Last time we were up here, you, uh, there's 21 million shares versus 17. Hasn't been able to hold price. It needs more volume, but the bottom line is that um, it, it does, uh, it's, it's at a high price. There's no, there's no two ways about that. We gotta take a look at the, uh, oh, bonds. Let's go over to bond market. How did we miss that? Okay, so bonds. Well, we have, you have the 10 year right now down 17 ticks. And big volume too, by the way. Okay, you got, uh, well, it's not that big. No, it's, no. Okay, it's, okay, let me pull this back. So, if we take a look at the TLT for a second, the 20 plus, and see how we're doing this. Okay, so it gapped off its high of 119. You're at 116.84. You're coming in with 8 million shares, and you're coming into 10 million. So, so what you have is this. You're coming down, um, see, you're definitely coming down with volume here. Uh, we take, go back over the 10 year for a second, this is what you have. We're down uh, 125.25, so that means that the, the swing point is game, which is 125.19. Thus far, it's rejected that lower swing. You know, we'll see uh, if it can stay over the 125.19. We take a look at the 30 year, what you have with the 30 year. 30 year is down almost a point and a half. It's going to need a lot more juice than this. So you're coming into the 139.29 area. We've hit 140.03. This is also going to need more volume, you know. But it looks like uh, this, this is some price destruction today uh, in both the 10-year and the 30-year. The 10-year right now is at uh, 2.4, which, by the way, still will keep 30-year mortgages at the 4.0, um, depending on... When you got a 4.0, three, uh, probably not a 3.9, 4.0, 4 uh, 4.1 level. Um, Dow Industrials, this is kind of make it back flat. This is like just amazing. Um, Dow Industrials right now, they, right now you're only down 34, 39. And what you have, folks, uh, is that you're going to end up have uh, basically a, you're going to be up on price once again with lighter volume. You know, coming the starting the, the day off, uh, the day after Labor Day. We take a look at those that spy, the SPY. What you're going to see uh, also in the spy is we're at two hundred point five six, and thus far we've done fifty seven million shares. Um, the two point two hundred point eight two would be is it eight two close. Yeah, it's two hundred point eight two. No, I guess so. No, 200.71 is the highest close we've had thus far. Right now, you're at 200.55, and there's uh, no reason not to think that uh, they're not going to run it into the close again with light volume. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Don't forget, come over to our website, at TFNN. You can check out Basil's going to be having a Master Trader series a week from this Friday. It's an eight-hour online series. Dow Industrials right now are down uh, 31, 33. NASDAQ's up 15. S&P's are up a buck and a half. We're going to be right back. You've heard Basil Chapman on the air as the host of the Tiger Technician's Hour, and now's your chance to spend a full day learning his trading methodology, the Chapman Waves. Basil has taught thousands of students his trading methods over the years, and on Friday, September 12th, he'll be hosting a one-day online Master Trader Series class. Included is a month of his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $128 value. 
Basil will cover a variety of topics and techniques that he uses when looking at key charting patterns that repeat consistently in the market and that you can add to your trading methodology. You have access to the full eight-hour archive for a period of 30 days, as well as availability to ask questions of Basil in the month following the course as you practice what he teaches in this full-day Master Trader class. For all the details, visit TFNN.com and sign up for Basil Chapman's Master Trader class on Friday, September 12th. Reserve your seat today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.com. MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now down 28. NASDAQ's up 17. S&P's uh, going to be uh, flat. We, uh, they're down uh, just a half a point right now. 
if we do go take a look at those uh, E-minis, what you're going to see out here uh, is that you're at uh, 2,000.75 and uh, they're going to try to get them up into that, uh, somewhere into that uh, 2,001 area, I suspect, because your yeah, yeah, intraday swing is 2,000.75. That's where we are right now. Uh, but Right. We'll, we'll see where that shakes out. Bottom line is that we are going to have a uh, high with lighter volume. Right now you're at 433 million, which will bring it in more than likely at about uh, 525. We take a look at the end, uh, the NASDAQ composite. The composite is 1.6. Now, that's going to be interesting. So the composite is going to come in with some juice out here today, meaning that uh, we're at, if we're at 1.6 right now. So that would be saying that we could get about... 1.8, 1.9, you know, which uh, when we do look at the NASDAQ composite, it should do more than that, but we haven't had one of those numbers in quite a while. Last time we had 2 billion shares was August 1st. If you go back uh, six months, yeah, you get a two or three 2 billion shares. So July 8th, we had 2.2 .2 billion. So uh, how that shakes out into the close, uh, that certainly won't be a higher high with volume, but what it will be is that you do have an expansion of volume, which is saying that, hey, guess what, you can get higher. Uh, it's certainly not in the NDX 100. Uh, the NDX 100 has life volume, and the NDX 100 is just uh, basically, the NDX 100 actually has had very tight range going all the way back to August 18th, and that's when it was at 98. So it was at 98.24 then, now you're at 100. What I mean by the tight range, this is always dangerous and highs, folks. You get very light volume. And each and every day, the range from high to low is very small. And that's exactly what we've had uh, since then. Uh, most times, uh, you know, when you have something like that, when this thing goes, uh, it'll eat all those days up in one day. That'll be pretty easy to do. Uh, we take a look at the uh, SPY and the correlation of what that is doing. Uh, why, the, the, the ranges have been wider in the SPY, uh, much wider. The IWM, the small caps, still the weakest indice out there is the small caps. We look at the small caps. The small caps right now, the IWM is up uh, 66 cents. We're at 117.22, which does put it over the swing point from last week, which is the 116.94 area. You're doing 32 million shares. That 32 million is coming into 52. And price-wise... You got uh, 117.70. We hit 117.50 out here today, but it looks like the uh, game's going to be uh, 117.70. So we'll see where this uh, whole thing uh, decides to shake out. What I do expect you're going to see, though, uh, is that come tomorrow, uh, what you are going to basically get out of this is that uh, the volume is going to start coming in, and we'll see which way uh, this baby wants to rock and roll, uh, meaning... Intraday today, you had some selling, but we knew that it was light volume. Um, the gold contract, the silver contract, I like what both of them uh, are actually doing. Uh, what, what you have is that the contracts themselves, GCZ4, um, had an expansion of volume. They're coming into the downdraft that was created out there on the 27th of May, as well as the day of strength. Uh, I expect we're at 1265. 66, 12, uh, 59, 12, 55 wants to get tested. That, folks, will be the highs of the lows that were generated in May. That's, that's where that whole thing looks like it's going to shake out. XAU, the HUI are acting a lot better than the actual contract itself. Um, depending on what equities you're in, if you're in any of those equities, what you have is that uh, many of them are just filling the gap from the July, the June 18th gap away. That's what they're doing. And I do expect uh, those gaps are going to get filled. Thus far, they've been pulling back to those gaps with lighter volume. What you're going to be looking for is a rejection of price. And uh, a few of these uh, have been acting uh, pretty good out here. Some of the high volume stocks in a low volume market out here inside the S&P. You have uh, Facebook is up a buck 83. You get Micron down a buck. We have uh, Twitter up a buck 85. Uh, Home Depot, uh, that's accelerating on the way down. That's down 236 right now. And uh, FireEye is up 274. Some of the Dow stocks out here, this is what you have inside the Dow. American Express is uh, up 10 cents. You get Boeing down a buck 39. ExxonMobil uh, is off a dollar. 
Oxy's down 145. You get uh, Big Blue down 87. Uh, Big Mac is off 37. Uh, Procter & Gamble's down 16. The uh, Microsoft is off 35. And uh, Home Depot, uh, just don't bite on Home Depot just yet. That's going to take a bit. Home Depot has 19 million shares. Um, she has a gap that's wide open at this uh, 84, 62 area. And what you are going to want to do, though, you're going to be want to be all over it, folks, because Home Depot is a much larger ABC structure on the way up. Your A point on Home Depot is uh, 28. Your B point is uh, 81. So let's say it's about uh, 53 bucks. Your C point is uh, 72. So you get about a uh, longer term, a buck 23. Uh, it blew away the B point, did it with volume, and that was on the uh, monthly basis. Uh, it can pull right back to the bottom of that, though, which is uh, a long way from where we are right now. Uh, don't forget, at TFNN, folks, each and every trading day, 8 a.m. till 6 p.m., we have live content. You can get all that content right on your cell phone, tfnn.mobi. If you want to get Tiger TV, just on your cell phone, go to tfnn.com. On the right-hand side, you're going to see Tiger. You're going to see the TV actually going. Hit that. You can get the audio as well as the video. Our man, Mr. John Logan, kicks you off uh, every morning with the global view of what is going on in all the markets. And that's crucial, folks, because the bottom line is that all these markets are still one, okay? Whether you go to Europe, whether you go to Asia. In fact, if we go over to the uh, Hang Sang for a second, we take a look at that Hang Sang. You'll see the Hang Seng has just gone from 2,100 to 2,500 in the last six months. That little baby um, has, it looks to me, uh, you know, we, we had good volume up there at 24,900. 24, that was in July. It tested that level in August and then came down twice with volume off of that. Last night it was a flat market coming down with volume. What that sets up is it's going to go after a lower swing point of 24,190. So it's going to be intriguing to see um, how we come back into that level. The Nikkei, NKE, what you have in Japan, particularly with that yen. Uh, Nik mm, let me see this one second. Okay, so yes, she is. Uh, the Nikkei uh, closed last night up uh, 192. That is out there, and she is testing her. Oh, it's going to be interesting. She's got, she's got some juice. Uh, no, she's tested the high. Let's see. We did 1.5 billion versus 1.2. Yeah, she tested the high last night on Light of Water. You stay right there, folks. We're going to be coming right back. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks. Whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's making a great week, folks. This is a quote uh, by Duke Ellington, a believer as an optimist who thinks of tomorrow. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow down 30, Nasdaq off, uh, up 17, uh, S&P's down a buck and a half, gold contract down $21.80, traded at 1267 an ounce. Now, if we start with the gold market, this is what you have, folks. Gold has wide price spread, accelerated volume, gets down, does some price destruction. We did 175,000 contracts here, 1265. Uh, that level was coming into the downdraft that had been created on May 27th. That's when gold went from 1267 to 1256, as well, uh, rather, the 27th, that went from 1295 to 1264, May 27th. As well, then we went upside on the 19th of June. We went from a price point of 1277 to 1322. So you had, you had expansion of volume, but let, lighter than both of those areas. What does that set up? That sets up, I expect, uh, this 1255, 1258, more than likely is going to get tested. That level there is going to be very hard to break on a volume basis. The reason being is that if, if we go over to the GLD, we'll put the GLD up, and we'll put this on a, first I'll uh, put it on a monthly, monthly basis. Well, I'll put it on a weekly basis. When you put it on a weekly basis, what you're going to see is this, is that the week of June, 
and 2013, not 2014, June 2013, the we came down and we came down with some monster volume. You know, the 124 was the high of that. Then what we did is that we tested that area on December of 2013. You know, so first what you had, you, you come down hard June of 2013. You tested it, and that was the test of in December of 2013. The high of that level is 120.77. I do expect that that high is going to get tested. And right now, we are at 121.65. What that would set up um, is a test of about $10 lower. The XAU, the HUI, the equities did not break their swing point. I suspect it's going to get to the swing point, uh, but it's really intriguing because the last time that we were down here, was trying to go in after the swing point and didn't make it. And that was on the... 25th of August. So with the price destruction that you still had inside the gold market, the silver market, commodities in general, bottom line, the equities themselves didn't make it down to the swing point. And what that sets up, that's saying that the equities are much stronger than the actual physical metal. Bond market. We have with the bond market. Bond market went south with volume expanding. Um, didn't break its swing point. Uh, where the 10 year is at 125.25. Uh, the 125.19 area, uh, it, had, it almost made it, but not made it yet. That still keeps, though, the 10-year is still under the 2.5, or 2.419. 30-year, that also got whacked out here today. 30-year came down uh, almost a point and a half. The way the 30-year is set up right now is that you can... I suspect the 30-year can pull back quite a bit. You know, the 30-year has been much stronger, number one, than the 10-year. Uh, but in the same context that the way that this came down out here today, you can, you can really make a case that the next swing point down is 139.11. Right now we're at 140.02. Uh, King Dollar. What did King Dollar do? King Dollar continued higher. Uh, the volume is kind of dying on King Dollar up here. It's been a straight line move since 79.50. Uh, longer term, it wants to go to 85.50. Uh, the real key is going to be, uh, is it going to take a rest between that area? If, you do not, if King Dollar does not take a rest, folks, that'll be the end of that move. Because it's too far of a move to sustain itself to higher volume, to higher price and keep higher price. What I do expect you're going to see, however, is you're going to see a counter trend bounce meaning counter trend pullback in the dollar. The euro is at 131. This has been straight down since 139. And the euro definitely wants to go, to me, wants to go a lot lower. But I expect what you're also going to see somehow in the euro, the euro is going to get some kind of a counter trend bounce also. Um, uh, oil, oil got absolutely toasted and roasted. Between oil and gasoline, folks, okay, we'll do, do gasoline first. Gasoline was down 2.8%. And what we have with the gasoline market, right now you're at uh, 284, and I, that looks like a large ABC structure down into the 250 area, which is going to give you uh, some uh, sweet relief, uh, everyone um, out there. Well, what's also going to happen in the Northeast, which is going to be pretty cool, is that uh, anywhere that has heating oil, the heating oil is also, folks, in an ABC structure on the way down. It's, it's a big one. The A point on this is uh, 307. Your B is uh, 280. So you got what? That's uh, 27 cents. Uh, that's going to basically, uh, that's going to put you down to, let's see, 90, 80, 70. Yeah, 265. You know, 265, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. 877-927-6648. Now, S&P. What do we have with the S&P? S&P, folks, you have a higher price point, still no volume behind the move. Uh, this is the first day back uh, after the summer isn't over, but basically Wall Street-wise, it actually is over. Um, light volume again once again today. Volume will come in the marketplace tomorrow. You know, the bottom line is that how we trade out here tomorrow, the rest of the week is going to be really important. Uh, you'll, you, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, we'll see how this volume reacts to these levels. We're at 2001, the benchmark for a lower price is 1991. 
Uh, inside the NASDAQ composite, that got higher today, and it did have an expansion of volume. The NASDAQ composite was up 17 bucks at 45.92. The Qs, the N NDX 100, though, however, um, you know, just uh, still no juice. Uh, 18 million shares traded out here. Uh, that should be banging about 40 million shares. What is intriguing, if you saw the Wall Street Journal this morning, uh, was that, check this out, I, I hadn't realized this, this is pretty cool. So Alibaba, folks, okay, is going to be the largest IPO to come out. They're going to try to get this baby out in the next 10 business days, meaning on the 18th of um, September, somewhere around there. And many times, okay, there's always some kind of catalyst that uh, puts tops in, puts bottoms in. We'll see if that's the case, but the article, if you get a chance, you want to Google this. Why? Because this guy, Jack Ma, uh, is pretty amazing, uh, is that they were talking about that he has a knack for market timing for bringing it out at the top of the market. Alibaba had been public before. It was public in Hong Kong. He brought it out right before Hong Kong, right at the highs of the Hong Kong market, the Hang Seng. And, of course, after that, Hang Seng crashed. Okay, so brought it out the highs that moved up somewhat. It crashed. He ended up buying all the shares back again. And what the article was about is that the he has a knack for basically being able to bring this out uh, at highs uh, in the marketplace. You know, it's pretty wild. Let's go to Scott in Safety Harbor. Hey, Scott, what's going on? Nope, I don't have him. He was going to look at the crude oil market. Maybe as we were walking through that crude oil market, um, that was answering his question. Uh, you stay right there, folks, because our man, Mr. Uh, Andy Heck, is going to be coming up next. And don't forget, uh, we're going to be talking commodities. Andy has an outstanding show every Tuesday, Thursday, uh, right after I get off 5 to 6 Eastern Standard Time right here at TFNN. Uh, we take a look at some of the high volume stocks in a low volume market, and this is what you have. You have Bank of America was up 18 cents, CompuWare is up $1.24. We had uh, GE down 13, Micron Tech is off a dollar. Uh, Home Depot, Home Depot, let's pull up Home Depot. If we take a look at Home Depot, this is what you have with Home Depot. Um, you're down a dollar eighty-eight. You did twenty million shares. We're at ninety-one fifteen. Let's go back to Scott. Hey, Scott, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I have a question about crude. If if you were a believer in crude, what would you buy right now? What would you recommend? I just think with so many things going on, it just seems inevitable that uh, something's going to happen. That sounds good. You mean that crude's going to go up? Crude's going down. Yeah, but we're, the, the, the we're, at, we're at ninety-three dollars. Crude's going to eighty-five. Have a great one. Have a safe one. You stay right there, folks. Andy Hex coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now down thirty. Nasdaq up seventeen. S and P's uh, down a buck and a half. We're going to break back. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't 
Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Sink or Swim, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. We have uh, the Dow Industrials finished down 30. NASDAQ up 17. S&P's off uh, a buck 75. And as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the second hour, we have our man, Mr. Andy Heck. Don't forget, folks. Every Tuesday, Thursday, 5 to 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, right here, Andy has an outstanding show. You can get it right on your cell phone at tfnn.mobi. You can also test drive Andy's newsletter, the Technomento Commodity Report, by coming over to our website at tfnn. Go to newsletters, go to trading newsletters. You can test drive that two weeks absolutely free. Andy Heck, what's going on? Happy September, Tom. Yeah, happy September. Imagine that, man. Pretty yeah, amazing. Time goes fast. Oh, time flies. So we came out with a bang in commodities today, huh? Yeah, we did, man. No doubt. Yeah, gold and silver. We'll have to see what happens. I, I was listening to you in uh, yeah. the previous segments. We'll have to see. I mean, we want to see this thing hold like 1240, 1250. That's a fact. Um, yeah. No, no doubt. Uh, oil, um, I couldn't agree more. As a matter of fact, I put up in the den, I wrote an article on Seeking Alpha yesterday, that uh, 96 bucks for crude is too expensive, and crude oil looks miserable here. I mean, yeah. you got a lot of things working against it. One, the, the spreads are going from backwardation into contango. That happened all summer. Okay. Number two, you got a lot of crude oil in the United States. Right. Number three, Brent is now flirting with the hundred dollar psychological level, and okay. that spread has come down from fourteen bucks at the beginning of the summer to seven dollars and change right now. Nothing looks good in crude oil. I'd like to be short the XLE. I want to be short crude on any rallies here. Yeah, it's good. you know it's going to be really cool. Is that the the amount of money that folks are going to have between heating bills and their gasoline is going to be pretty incredible. Absolutely, it's a tax break, isn't it? Yeah, it's huge, yeah. man. I mean, it's... Right, I want to talk about I want to talk about meats for a meats, minute. Meats, okay. I I, I I got a chart up here. Okay. You can take a look at it. I have it posted. You in want the cattle den. or hogs? Does it matter? Uh, yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Of course, cattle. I want to talk about both. I okay. want to talk about both because right now. 
with cattle and hogs, it's a coin toss, which is probably appropriate coming into football season, right? Okay. Um, you know, you got bullish and bearish factors. Bearish for both, you got the end of grilling season. So seasonality doesn't favor these, uh, these things. Okay. On the bullish side, you still have very small herds in cattle, uh, and you still have rising global demand for beef. Okay, both yep. bullish things. On the bearish side, you have very low feed prices for your lows in the grains. Um, you know, and animal protein producers are it behooves them to raise bigger herds. So that's uh, that's bearish. Sure. All right. So, but what I've noticed, and I put this chart up here, okay. is again intercommodity spread, the relationship of cows versus hogs. And I like to call it, what's for dinner? <laughs> yeah. Because you go to the supermarket, you look at the pork chops, you look at the steaks, you look at the pork products, you look at the beef products, there's a big price difference, about a 50% price difference. Yes. Uh, cattle over um, hogs, beef over pork. Sure. So what I've seen here lately, if you look at this chart, this is live cattle. It's a 40,000-pound contract divided by lean hogs, okay. a 40,000-pound contract. And you'll see on here it's turning, which means that it might be a very good time to have no conviction on overall price level uh, direction of either one, but to be short the cattle and long the hogs I see. as consumers. Okay. okay. And the momentum seems to be turning. And it seems to be a good level to put this on. So, you know, that, that's kind of a trade that I'm, I'm looking at here and a relationship that I like. And you know I love these inter-commodity right, spreads right. because they tell you so much about value. And they're telling you right now that cattle's a little too expensive relative to pork. They do. And what, what definitely does happen is that the, the aspect of the affordability on something like pork and our cattle um, is huge because we eat it every day. I mean, not everyone, but the, the reality is that it's it's huge. There's no doubt about that, man. Exactly. Red wheat, red meat versus white meat. Right, right. <laughs> right. But, but it's very interesting. You know, I look at these things. I look at them in platinum versus gold, which I think looks very good here, uh, being long platinum and short gold on spread. Um, I look at it in terms of corn versus beans as to the, the behavior that farmers have. And you can look at it in intersector um, uh, different commodities to get you a, a feeling of what true value is. Yes. And that's what it's all about. You know, if you just say, hey, cattle is $1.50 a pound, what does that mean? You know, it's a price. But when you put it in the perspective of what some similar, what another consumer choice or a producer choice could be, it becomes, it comes to life. Yeah, it does come to life. Yeah, and it, and, it, and it makes it easier. Well, it's never easy to pick a direction, but it makes it easier, and it's more information. And as you know, as an analyst, whether it's technical or fundamental or technomental, the more input, the more data you have, the more likely you are to be able to make the intelligent choice, the right choice. Right, and, and there, there's no doubt that the amazing thing, you know, what I've seen, Andy, over the course of the years, it's cool understanding the the wholesale price so they really even understand the retail price and, and what's going on inside that market. Do you know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And when it comes to this chart that I put up, note that this is a weekly chart. This is not a daily chart. So this is a longer term, you know, a, a medium term trend chart. And, you know, on the daily chart, it's great for day trading. But on the weekly chart, it tells you more like what the next kind of month looks like, how the momentum over the next month feels. And the momentum in that relationship feels down now. And, you know, you can never pick a top. Listen, picking tops and picking bottoms are very, very difficult to do. But when momentum turns, sometimes those are the best trades. You take the meat out of the trade. You can never take the whole yeah. uh, oh, bottom to top out. But taking the meat out, if you're looking to take the meat out in the meat, that's the way to play it. Yeah, well, you know, it's wild. I was surprised last week. I didn't even know that they traded uh, butter futures. And oh, they're very, very thin and illiquid, but they're on all-time highs. Yeah, and, you know, it's amazing. You know, so I was talking about this bulletproof butter, uh, bulletproof coffee, and, and it's just amazing. You know, and it's like, 
it, it was a heads up in general. Do you know what I mean? I'm saying to myself, wow, this is interesting that they they trade everything. Do you know what I mean? They trade everything. Yeah. They trade everything where there's liquidity and a broad enough uh, base. A futures market exchange will put up a contract where there's a broad enough base of consumers and producers and enough price volatility and liquidity to support a futures contract. Yeah, right. No, I... So, you know, butter is, it, there is one, but it isn't very good. Hey, there's also one in milk. Yeah, no, no, I, yeah. And right, right. Milk price is a sustained... Right. Now, uh, you have to mention coffee. Now, there's a lot of dryness in Brazil, and it looks like we're breaking higher in coffee. I think we're going to challenge that April high of about 220 a pound here. Yeah, it was up, uh, what, 4% today. Yeah, we're close to 210 a pound in coffee, so, and you know. You get, you get juice behind it. You know, the last spike was 211 or 209, and that's saying, right. yeah, well, actually, let me just look at this for a second. That's an ABC up, so your eight point is 163. Now you have about 30 cents, which is 210. Oh, actually, yeah, two, oh, that's interesting. That just hit 210. What, 30? Yeah, 210. Two, 223, I think, yeah. is, is the next big level. Yeah, it and is. And then we get through there, we're looking at all, we're looking at, you know, targets near all-time highs. I guess 290 to 310. 310 was the all-time high, and that was put up in May 2011. You know, it'd be you wild know what's if, interesting? If, Co Remember we were talking about coffee last September yeah. and how bearish we were? Yeah. <laughs> Look at sugar now. It smells, a, it smells a lot like coffee did last year. That's a beautiful thing. And listen, folks, you can listen more of Andy coming up in uh, 35 minutes right here at TFNN. Andy, you have a great one, safe one. Look forward to the show tonight. Have a great one, Tom. Stay Bye. right there, folks. We'll come right back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. You've heard Basil Chapman on the air as the host of the Tiger Technician's Hour, and now's your chance to spend a full day learning his trading methodology, the Chapman Wave. Basil has taught thousands of students his trading methods over the years, and on Friday, September 12th, he'll be hosting a one-day online Master Trader Series class. Included is a month of his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $128 value. Basil will cover a variety of topics and techniques that he uses when looking at key charting patterns that repeat consistently in the market and that you can add to your trading methodology. You have access to the full eight-hour archive for a period of 30 days, as well as availability to ask questions of Basil in the month following the course as you practice what he teaches in this full-day Master Trader class. For all the details, visit TFNN.com and sign up for Basil Chapman's Master Trader class on Friday, September 12th. Reserve your seat today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. 
You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we had Exxon Mobil uh, down 97. You had Oxy off 136. Uh, uh, Big Blue is down 74. Uh, 3M was up 22. You had Procter Gamble down 13. C-O-N-N. -N. This is an equity that uh, got uh, wrecked out here today. Now, this is cons. It's especially retail of home appliances and consumer electronics through stores in Texas and Louisiana and via its website. They also offer uh, office equipment, lawn and garden products. The low is today. It was down $13, $31. And if you want to see something that um, just, ha number one, has volume off the high, and it's going to be a monster ABC down, this was it. So it had made a high in December of 2013 with no volume up at $80. Uh, first leg down was vicious. The, it went, goes straight from $80 down to February of this year, got to a low of $31.88. That, that low, folks, is a high volume low. You do a counter trend bounce up to 51. So it goes up 20 bucks from, from that and then just lets loose um, this morning. It closed at $44.83 $44 on Friday. Today it opens down to 32.28. Uh, your B point is uh, 31.88. Uh, closed at 31. On the weekly basis, uh, if you get more than 36,000 shares, that's a confirmed ABC structure on the way down. It's a monster, too. The A point, it's a 50 point A to B structure, which would basically uh, just about put, the put it out of business. Your A point out here is $80.33. Your B is 31, which is 50 bucks. Um, the C point is $51.99. Uh, so I, my understanding is that uh, this type of business, um, they're also basically like an errands. They rent um, consumer electronics also. And uh, bottom line, evidently, um, it's hard to tell whether folks just aren't renting uh, anymore, uh, or is the internet basically even getting into that business? Meaning that, um, you know, the errands and, you know, this, this place here, when they rent to own or just rent in general, um, the spreads on those products are huge. And folks basically go broke doing it. And they don't have any money to start with because that's why they're doing it. Um, bottom line, uh, this, the amount of folks that are switching from TV to the Internet is huge each and every day. And it's really possible that that's also what's going on here. So we'll see how that shakes out. But uh, bottom line is that that stock looks like it's going to be basically out of business, which is uh, pretty amazing. 
So Apple hits a uh, all-time high out here today. We get to a price point of 103.74, closed at 103.30. That, no doubt, is, is still up here with zero volume. The last high that we had out here, uh, 103.74. 100.72. You had uh, on a weekly two, on a monthly 2.3 billion, and last month we did 937 million. So what you would need for Apple to get to lower price first to close under 100.72. Um, in the news articles out here this morning, you had that um, the initial news was that their iCloud had uh, got hacked, and Apple came out uh, and said, "No, that hasn't happened." Happened. Uh, Apple said that its iCloud service wasn't breached by hackers who posted new pictures of celebrities as the company works to deflect questions about the security of its systems. Photos from celebrities were stolen individually. The company said the celebrity accounts were compromised by a very targeted attack on usernames, passwords, and security questions, a practice that is all too common on the Internet, um, Apple said in a statement today. Apple's working to quiet a firestorm about the hacked celebrity accounts uh, with nude photos and other surfacing so what you have here, folks, is this is important to understand the context of uh, clouds in general and individual accounts that are on the clouds. Okay, so what Apple's saying specifically is that it wasn't their servers that got hacked, meaning, like, let's say there was a, when there was a breach at the Target um, credit cards. What that happens is that they got into all their servers, they got the credit cards. Uh, the Home Depot deal today, we'll find out how that shakes out. The rumor is that there's been a breach. Uh, well, it's not a rumor. What, what it is is that Home Depot said themselves that the Home Depot, the largest home improvement chain, fell the most in five months after it said it was working with banks and law enforcement to investigate a possible data breach. So Home Depot was basically saying that they, they might have got breached. Now, that type of breach would be another credit card batch, and they'd be in all of those servers. In Apple's case, what Apple is saying is that no, uh, iCloud did not get breached. Individuals that were targeted, meaning celebrities, they were targeted individually, and those passwords individually were targeted, and then you can get back inside the cloud. So you, they would get inside the cloud, but the fact of the matter is they're only getting inside that one account. In this case, it uh, didn't say how many other accounts that they were going after. Uh, bottom line is that this security issue uh, each and every day is getting uh, heavier and heavier, you know, and it's, it's going to be, uh, it's important, <laughs> it's really important, folks, to have your passwords intact, to change your passwords and all of the above. It, it, it absolutely is, because it seems that um, this is getting faster. Uh, I think if Many of the large companies actually gave us a, a heads up about how many attacks actually are taking place and the vulnerability. We would probably all be like saying, "You've got to be kidding me!" And would bring, you know, would bring a lot of things, a lot of things off of line because it's just a, a continual basis. Uh, and you know, if you learned anything, um, the larger companies. I'm definitely not going to tell that they're vulnerable to attacks and our accounts are vulnerable to attacks. Just not, it's just not going to happen. Uh, we go take a look at the, uh, the XLE. The XLE, we we're talking about the oil energy in general. The XLE looks like it's going to be basically building some cars for a very large ABC structure on the way down. That's the oil and gas sector. Uh, we did 8.5 million shares out here today. Your B point is 94.49. And we need 13 million uh, as you're going after that B point to break it to get you an ABC structure on the way down. Uh, many of the equities that are inside the XLE um, want lower price, number one. The XLE itself, now this is where it's going to get interesting. The XLE had broken out of its high from 2008. That high was 91.42. You get back inside that level, that's trouble. That's trouble, big trouble. Why? Because that would be a fall, constitute a false break topside. Uh, it certainly didn't have the volume. We broke topside, folks, at 181 million shares in June. That was taken out 560 million shares. That's insane. But bottom line, it did it. Okay? So 
guess what? You break back inside 91, 42, it's a major problem. And the leader out here has been ExxonMobil. Uh, ExxonMobil got saved on price today, you know, it did, but it didn't hit the swing point, the lowest swing point, the B point. That's 97.63. We got the 97.81. We did that on 8.9 million shares. That B point has 10 million shares. That says, number one, you're coming down with force. You stop before the B point. It's going to build more cars. It's going to go after that B point. If you do take a look at ExxonMobil, we pull this back a little. What you're going to see is that ExxonMobil has multiple high volume swing points. ExxonMobil itself has already got back inside its lower range, meaning it got back inside 101.74. So what that sets up, that sets up a 92 to 89 number. And in that context, that's on the weekly. We take this back and you put this back on a monthly and what ends up happening in ExxonMobil is that at 94, then it has real problems. At 94, uh, it had traded at 94 in 2007 for eight months. It broke out of that area December of this year. It broke out with 269 million versus 600 million. So you get back inside that area, what that would set up, you know, not the end of the world, but it sets up about an 81 Exxon Mobil. And right now you're at 98. So technically it's set up like that. Fundamentally, it's definitely set up like that. Uh, why? Because Exxon Mobil folks continues to do a huge amount of business in Russia. Um, you know, and we'll see where that whole baby goes, meaning uh, how are they going to continue to do business as more restrictions get done on doing business in Russia. Because the bottom line is that uh, uh, the Ukraine situation, you know, it, it's all... It's done. Let's put it this way. You know, Putin's going to basically cut that uh, country in half right where that river is. And uh, it's not a thing that uh, Europe is going to do to stop. That's what it comes down to. I suspect that thing is they've already given up on it. Um, and we're going to see that. We're going to see that very quickly, too, by the way. Uh, what is going to get intriguing is that what's going to happen, uh, the way it seems to be setting up right now is this, is that you're, let's see, we're in September. Uh, the cold weather will start coming in. He'll give it another three or four more weeks, right? Then he makes the play, goes in for it. Um, if everyone keeps, uh, you know, saying they're going to do this and do, they're going to do that, guess what? He has the gas pipeline. Boom. That shuts off. 30% of Europe, guess what? Gets cold. That's going to be the negotiate point. You stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com 
Tom and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator. Of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Join Andy Hecht as he teaches you how to make money in commodities. The Commodities Hour, next on TFNN. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. We had the uh, Dow finish down 30, NASDAQ up 17, S&Ps are down a buck and a half. Uh, NASDAQ, uh, the NDX 100 was up uh, 11 50, and what we do have is that uh, coming up in the next week and a half, two weeks, is Alibaba. Alibaba is going to be doing an IPO, and uh, that is going to be one of the largest IPOs uh, ever. Um, so we'll see how that shakes out. Um, they, news is that uh, the SEC should be okaying that any day. And as soon as that gets okayed, folks, what you'll see, you're going to see a fast road trip um, and a fast putting out. Uh, why? Because uh, there's nothing like the momentum uh, at highs in the marketplace, uh, the amount of uh, acceleration and PR that Alibaba has come out with, uh, no doubt, has been extraordinary. Um, and I suspect it will get even bigger. You know, so uh, numbers-wise, uh, the numbers are out there. So we'll see how that uh, baby does shake out. Uh, but that's something you want to keep your eye on. The reason being is that as we are at highs, number one, but as you get huge numbers out, meaning... Um, in the marketplace and the, the IPO in general, um, that many times uh, it basically is putting in the top. And there's no doubt Jack Ma, who is who's doing this, definitely put in the top the last time that he did an IPO because Alibaba was, did IPO and the Hang Sang market 
And then he ended up buying, uh, he I, I IPO'd evidently 22% of the market of the shares, and then ended up, uh, you know, they went up dramatically. They crashed with the markets in 2007 across the world. Uh, he ended up buying all those shares back, and this is the, he's IPO'd pan, this uh, baby uh, once again. So we'll see whether... Uh, he gets the top tick in the marketplace, which is pretty amazing, uh, just thinking of it in general, because the aspect of this has been going on almost for like a year. And it's like, wow, you know, I kept looking at saying, when is that IPO going to come out? OK, uh, you know, why? Because it's so big. Uh, bottom line is that it seems to be taking longer than they initially thought. Um, and, you know, we'll see uh, if, in fact, they get it out on time. You know, what, what you will get, because uh, there's so many large banks that are involved in that IPO, they will do their best to basically keep the markets at highs to basically get that out. What does happen simultaneously is that the um, amount of money that gets pushed out that morning is absolutely incredible. There's no, there's no two ways about that. So we'll see where that does, does shake out. Um, they're definitely a company that if you look at their numbers, their numbers are, are going up astronomical, and they have gone up on a continual basis. So we'll see if that uh, continues. Uh, small caps out here is the, the weakest indice out here. S&Ps continue at highs. The Dow Industrials uh, look like they've already uh, basically double topped. You know, so what you had here with the, with the Dow is that we got that double top in. That was on the 26th of August. We got to that 17,153, gave it up again. That, that had been testing the July high. Um, that's going to be really interesting to, to watch this whole baby shake out. The reason being, like, inside the Dow Industrials today, what you had um, is Home Depot, Chevron, Boeing, and Intel were taken away from it. Visa, Disney, United Technologies, and Nike were putting into it. Well, inside that context, you know, what you're going to see is that good old ExxonMobil is going to start basically grinding at the Dow Industrials. The reason being, uh, ExxonMobil looks like a monster ABC structure on the way down. Uh, another one that could be a, an ABC structure on the way down is Boeing. Boeing is down to buck thirty-two out here today. It's off its high of one thirty-eight. You're at one twenty-five, and the way this is also set up is that the benchmark, which is that February fifth level. At 118, uh, it already broke that 118. It broke. It hit 117.87 in August. That was that was showing its cards, because you got to remember that 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 February 5th benchmark, folks, is the benchmark for the S&P, and that's a long way down on the S&P. There's not a huge amount of stocks that have hit it, but there's a lot of stocks that have hit it that you wouldn't expect would have hit it. Meaning a Boeing. A Boeing's number one. United Technologies would be another one. You know, it just, United Technologies decimated it. Uh, the low of uh, February was uh, 107, and United Technologies went down to 103 with volume. United Technologies also looks like a, a monster ABC structure on the way down. Uh, so we'll see where that uh, shakes out. Big Blue, IBM, that is the largest waiting inside the Dow Industrials. That's at 191, and that, you know, we'll see... The consolidation is still on out there. The bottom of that consolidation is 179. The top is hanging out here at 196. This has been trading sideways. Um, this equity here going all the way back. This is pretty amazing, actually. Uh, October of 2011. We're at the same price. October of 2011, big blue. And that whole area at the very top, you know, so it went, goes sideways for about a year and a half on light volume. It comes off the top range, meaning that the, the, the top of the top range is, you know, 210 to about 200, okay? Comes off that range, and then the volume starts expanding. Uh, this has been building a huge amount of cost to get to lower price, and that has to do with, folks, the amount of shares that are outstanding. That's always important, the understanding the amount of shares that are outstanding uh, and how long it takes at tops to distribute that type of numbers going out in the marketplace. Uh, King dollar, gold, silver. Uh, if we take a look at this King dollar uh, right now, had strength again uh, once out here. I do expect you're going to basically, King dollar wants to back off a bit and build some more cars. But 
on a, on, that's on a shorter term basis. On a longer term basis, what is screaming for King Dollar is this 8550 area. And how we get to this 8550 is crucial because it looks to me like it's a very large ABC structure on the way up. Um, if we go straight to 8550, then it's going to be like, oh, that's going to be, it's going to be tough to get the volume. Uh, if we build some cars right before it, right before the high of that, then game would be on that the King Dollar wants to get up to this uh, 89 area, which is just amazing. And the key then is going to be, of course, um, how we get there, number one, and what type of rest that it takes in between that for the gold and silver market. Because if you go straight up, that's going to, that's going to, that's going to, continue to keep pressure on the gold and silver market. Something you do want to remember uh, if you are inside that gold market is that we're at 1266. Uh, you know, yeah, it wants to test the 1260, uh, 1255 area, but gold out of the ground, tons out of the ground, okay, uh, you're at 1179. So bottom line is that you get under 1179. Uh, I don't expect that, by the way, but 1179 is what it costs to get gold out of the ground. You stay right there, folks. I'm Mad Mr. Andy. Heck's going to be coming up next, growling a problem with you. And always remember, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Whatever you want in life, folks. Visualize it, step into it, take ownership of it, fire with it. Stay right there, folks. Andy's coming right up.